Most of you would probably agree that high school isn't nearly as awesome as TV shows make it out to be. These are the best years of your life, parents often say. What a load of crock. It's no surprise then that when I received an invitation to attend my 10 year high school reunion, my reaction wasn't so much, yay, but rather, yeah, no. I crumbled up the invitation into a neat little ball, which I promptly threw into my overflowing recycling bin. I had been bullied a lot in high school, and the last thing I wanted was to talk to those people again. It was only after relentless nagging from my friends that I reluctantly agreed to go. I wish I hadn't. The night of my 10 year high school reunion was the weirdest and scariest of my life. I sat in the parking lot waiting for my overzealous friends to show up. They promised me we didn't have to socialize and that the three of us would just hang out all night and check things out. I looked at my phone. They were late and had not left me any messages. I shifted about in my seat, tugging at my extremely uncomfortable dress. I had been forced to buy it for the reunion, which just added to my frustration. I've never been at ease in a dress. Wearing one just feels unnatural to me, like I'm galloping around in a clown outfit. I sent my friends a text message while idly eyeing the banner above the main doors. Welcome class of 2000, it said in big bold letters. I could hear music blaring from the Agora. It started to get a little chilly, so I headed into the school. My friends had not replied. Annoyed and wanting to go home, I grabbed my name tag off the table and pinned it to my dress's strap. I followed the horrendous sound of techno music and found my way into the cafeteria, which opened up to our school's large agora. On the stage, huge speakers throbbed and vomited the sorry excuse for music into a dancing crowd. There were oceans of balloons and streamers hanging from the ceiling. I glanced towards the table of refreshments. A group of at least 30 people stood in front of it, obscuring my view of the punch bowl. There was something off about the whole scene, but I couldn't quite put my finger on it. I scanned the room and realized something. I didn't know most of these people. At first, I figured they were my classmates, significant others. But upon further inspection, I realized they outnumbered the familiar faces three to one. I checked my phone again. Neither of my friends had contacted me. Figures. They bailed on me. Again. I was fumbling trying to get my phone back into the cheap purse I had bought for the occasion when someone bumped into me. I recognized her immediately and my stomach dropped. It was Marie Claude, my main tormentor. I was sure her deadbeat ass wouldn't show up here. I was wrong. She gave me a weird look and spoke. Hi, it's nice to see you again, she began, then paused to look at my name tag. Caroline, she finished. I forced a smile and nodded. Yeah, uh, you too, I answered, feeling nauseous. 
This skank tortured me for five years, and her cordial attitude didn't sit well with me. I wasn't that surprised that she forgot my name. I couldn't recall the name of most of my classmates. I remembered their faces, though, so there's that. I excused myself and walked off. In a quick pace, I walked towards the refreshments. People were still swarming around it like fruit flies on a rotten apple. Strange thing is, I could have sworn it was the exact same people as before. One of the many strangers roaming the cafeteria approached me. Hi, it's nice to see you again, Caroline, he said using the exact same tone and inflection that Marie Claude had used earlier and checking my name tag just like she had done. I don't think I know you, I replied, taking a step away. His vacant stare suggested he had too much to drink. I turned on my heels and walked right into another stranger. Hi! It's nice to see you again, Caroline, she said as well. By then, I was thoroughly crept out. Things were getting too weird for comfort. I scurried off to the side, trying to gather myself, but everyone I came across said the exact same thing. Was this some kind of elaborate prank? Techno music continued to play non-stop. I stared at my cell phone, pretending I was doing something so I could avoid having to socialize further. It took me a good 10 minutes to look up again. It wasn't my imagination. The group around the punch bowl hadn't budged. I slowly shifted my gaze towards the Agora to get a look at the dancers. Upon closer inspection, I realized they weren't so much dancing as they were thrashing about, repeating the same motion over and over again, like moths banging themselves against the window to get to the light inside. Have you ever looked at the audience in sport video games? To give the illusion of a living crowd, the audience is given a set of two to three reoccurring moves which they randomly cycle through. That's exactly what the dancers look like to me. My focus then changed to the music. I may be a little biased here because I don't like techno, but I could have sworn the song hadn't changed since my arrival. It was just looping the same noises with frustrating repetition. It was giving me one hell of a headache. I walked into the washroom, feeling an immediate sense of relief. The thick concrete wall shielded me from the assaulting music outside. I smiled as I spotted the sink. It protruded from the wall in a large semicircle, around which it could fit at least five people. A step pedal underneath allowed the user to activate two dozen small streams of water. I always liked this sink. It was user-friendly and reminded me of a fountain. I pushed down on the pedal and splashed water onto my face. So refreshing. It was then that I heard the bathroom door slowly squeaking open. I instinctively retracted into one of the stalls and locked it. I remembered this stall. The crack on the wall the chip in the floor tile, the profanities carved into the separators. I had spent almost all my breaks hiding in that very stall. Technically, there was no reason to hide now. 
Someone wanted to use the washroom. Nothing weird there. For some reason, however, I felt an enormous amount of dread. I could hear the girl's footsteps as she entered the room. I know you're here, she uttered in a sing-song voice. My jaw dropped and I nearly screamed. I slapped my hands to my mouth to keep myself silent. The skin of my arms formed a mountain range for the microbes living on them. I held my breath, slowly climbed onto the toilet seat and crouched. My stupid dress made it hard to stay balanced atop the porcelain throne, so I used an arm to steady myself and hoped that I would go undetected. I didn't want her to find me. I didn't know what would happen if she did. I saw her through the cracks in the stall's door. She was leaning down, trying to find my feet. My heart thumped hard. I hoped she couldn't hear it beating. Shit, shit, shit. After a few moments, she turned around and headed back to the party. I finally exhaled and shakily planted my feet back on the floor. I waited a couple of minutes and then snuck out through the washroom's other door. I was half expecting her to be standing outside, but was relieved when I walked out to an empty hallway. I headed towards the Agora. I was sure now the music hadn't changed. Same people at the refreshment table. Same weird dancing. Just when I thought things couldn't get any scarier, shit got real. The dancing stopped. Everyone's heads twisted slowly and mechanically towards me in unison. They were wearing eerie, crooked smiles. My stomach dropped and my heart nearly stopped. I turned to the cafeteria and the punch bowl crowd stared at me with the same unearthly grin and vacant eyes. Shit. I'd had enough. I ran out of there like a bat out of hell, my legs spreading out so far that my dress ripped. I didn't stop until I reached my car, and then I sped home, going through a red light. Honestly, I think I would have been relieved if cops had caught me, because at least then I could tell someone to go check out the high school. Hands trembling, I opened the door to my apartment and locked it behind me, ripping the dress from my sweaty body. I could barely catch my breath. Again, I wondered if it was some kind of horrible prank. Maybe all my bullies had gotten together for one final hurrah. No, there were too many people involved, too many moving parts. No one would go through that much trouble to freak out someone they hadn't seen or spoken to in 10 years, right? God damn, it was scary as shit. I still have nightmares about that night. If it was a prank, mission fucking accomplished. It's been almost five years and I still get rattled just thinking about it. Today, in the mail, I received a save the date for the 15 year reunion coming up this spring. 
Oh hell no. You better believe I ripped that bitch up. I am not going. And no amount of nagging from my friends will convince me otherwise.